So we really couldn't do this job without these three things. We have the liquid electrical tape. Absolutely a must to seal all those connections. We have the rule panel switch. That's the auto manual off switch, the momentary manual. It's ring loaded, go back. And then we have the 500 gallon per hour rule mate. And this has a built in float switch. So there's no room for another float switch. We don't really know how this is going to cycle. Given the water circumstances, we hope it doesn't short cycle, but we definitely are counting on that built-in built in switch. You're also going to need some marine silicone sealant. Okay, you could see the bilge pump down there. This is the one without the transducer. This is in an RX TX300 uh, 2016, and it's right below the turbo inlet hose. So by moving all those hoses, you can epoxy that base down. And by taking all those hoses off, you can pull the pump out of the base and swap it out if it were to fail. This is pretty much the ideal location when you don't have the transducer taking up that port side spot underneath the turbo air inlet. All right, we have a new GTX Limited 300 2019. We're putting a bilge pump in. You can see we've had to move several hoses, pretty much all of them here in the rear, the turbo hose, the intercooler hose. Be careful not to take this one here off. That goes to the coolant, and you'll leak all your coolant out. So it really can't go on the starboard side. It needs to go on the port side of the shaft, and in this case, the BRP outfitter put the transducer right where we would like to put the bilge pump. They could have easily put that maybe two inches farther. It would have made this job a lot easier. In so doing, the muffler system, all that device right there has to come out as well. It's a hard, long job. Okay, to get the exhaust off, you have to take off the rubber strap all the C-clamps, get all the hoses, get the exhaust temperature switch off and then there's room to slide it all the way back until it hits the back and you can see it does come off there's a there's a long stem here it was inside that pipe so if you don't pull it all the way back it's it only has like a sixteenth of an inch to spare to get it off and it has water in it so it's heavy once it's to this point, then you just rotate it around, and you can pull it right out. Okay, you can see it. See, it's coming out. The thing is, you have to turn it, what would that be, counterclockwise to get this facing this direction by moving the hose here over. And then when you turn it, you have to pull up really hard so that the bottom of this clears that long pipe I told you about. And as you can see, at this angle right here, it does come out. Once that's out, now you can properly put in your bilge pump. It's an eight hour job or more. Now in the limited, you can see we've taken out the exhaust water lock and we've put, sorry to hold this camera steady, bending over here. And we've put that bilge pump out there aft towards the center. And we've allowed a few inches, maybe two or three inches in front of the black thing behind it because that's the drain plug. But you can see the drain plug's up about an inch. So you, that's why you always have water in your ski. The drain plugs just can't get it all out. As far as the wiring, we've taken an orange three conductor cable back to the bilge pump, one for auto, one for manual, and one for ground. The green wire comes out the jacket up top. That's for the ground, that's on the negative terminal. We then add a fuse and another hot, and then wire tie that fuse around this air inlet and then that red wire will go up 
with the other two wires in the three conductor that went back to the bilge pump and when I say go up then it will come through here in what we call a cable gland and that cable gland is sealed with silicone and squeezed down hard and screwed in and then we put a split loom wire protector up and then the wire as you come around to the side here then the wires go up and you drill two holes it's kind of hard to see with the sun but you'll drill two holes in this one here and one here to get it to come up and then when it rounds the corner this right here has a little rivet so you drill this rivet out and this cowling here on the side comes off by pulling it this way sliding it straight back this way and then lifting up very carefully it has some J hooks in there and when that comes out you have a big area here you can reach to the side and then we ultimately end up with the bilge pump switch on the inside here in a vertical fashion that's the only way it will fit in there and you have your off which is the normal position manual when you know there's water in there and auto when you go to sleep at night or it's at the dock and you're not sure what's going on now you can see on the 2016 model the RTX 300 the bilge pump exhaust is right here by where this little kick thing footrest is here and that gives you plenty of angle to get in there and reach your hand underneath and screw in the fittings you'll have to drill a hole big enough to where it's the same size as the OD of this and you'll have to use a hole saw and a mandrel and then you have to bed this right here with 5200 or silicone some type of sealer that just the little washer there is not enough and then you have to ideally put a little bit on the back and then use the, your hand to get this on almost as far as you can and then we have a special tool that goes inside here that holds this one person needs to hold it while you take a spanner wrench in there and turn this as tight as you can it may seem like a large hole but the key is is that they want structural strength in this fitting they could easily make that three-quarter or five inch half inch whatever they want all the way up to the end but then that would make it weak and it might break off so I know a lot of people don't want to put holes in their hull but that's what through hulls do now another person said you can see that with this limited model this whole floor panel comes off the first two screws have nuts on the back the rest of them are toraxes and they'll spin right off and in the top here you can see this hole here that's where the wakeboard pole goes and some people have said that they want to put the through hole right here and um, you know granted it's cosmetically good but a it defer defeats the purpose here which I imagine there's gonna be accessories like umbrellas and all kinds of stuff come out and also you can see here that these drains over here if you were to have the water come out here then it has to rely on this little scupper drain that goes underneath this deck and over here those can easily become clogged with seaweed and what have you there's one here and one here so this isn't the greatest waterproof design back here these screws you can see there's just a little plastic fitting in there and as you tighten them they do put a seal on it but that also leaves a well for water to sit there's going to be a ton of water underneath this plastic deck at all times so I'm not sure uh, about this design we'll see how dry it's going to be uh, but there again I don't like the idea of putting a through hole here it's much better to come over and you take your little limited sticker off right here 
and get it right here and then move the buy a new limited sticker and put the limited sticker right here boatyard san diego that's the way we do it and of course after you secure your cable up here make it cosmetically and to finish up the electrical we've got the p clamps going right in here stainless steel fastener quarter inch stainless steel quarter inch by number eight and a half inch p clamp then you can put your panel back on you can see the side panel here that's for the knee rest and it has a screw down here and it has a rubber sim you'll find them oftentimes in automotive holding up the ceiling liner and things like that you pull out the center black plug and then there's a hook mechanism down here you don't want to break these little tabs there. there's a tab there and a tab there and then right there a tab on the other side goes inside there so and then there's these tabs here so you don't want to break any of those tabs you do it just right it just slides right in there behind the speaker and then you then you just uh, slowly push it forward and then that covers up the wireway completely so it's easy to run additional wires if you end up where you want navigation lights or a horn any type of uh, toys Okay, now we're discussing the wiring. What we have to do is we have a little lip right here. That's our water seal. So our wire needs to come in on the inside of that so we don't disrupt that seal. So what we've done is we've drilled a small hole right here, right below the safety thing. And the wires will come through there and that will be siliconed up. From the front here, you can see the wires easily come up, and then you can easily push them through the hole from here, and then that will put a little piece of uh, the split loom right there to protect it. And that's really the hard part about the wiring. Then the split loom goes up to here. You need another P clamp here, and another P clamp here inside we have some adhesive that glues that switch in place so it doesn't rotate around also adds a little bit of waterproof but we'll end up putting liquid black tape all around here and seal that really well even though this is waterproof and you can see on the front here the uh we'll put two screws here to align this here and here and that uh, that'll be the switch plate. 